Hello, welcome back to the little Welsh cottage here in the heart of the Rhondda Valleys in South Wales. Today I'm doing another recipe from one of my old books. So I'm following a traditional recipe called Welsh cakes and I'm using a traditional bake stone to make them with. So I'll put all the details in the description below. So I'm starting off with eight ounces of self-raising flour. And we have to rub the fat into the spiced flour. So let us just add a little bit of nutmeg in. Not too much, don't want to take our breath away. Just a little nip. Nutmeg in this house only comes out at Christmas and for Welsh cakes. And then we put the fat in there. Now, it's been a while since I've done this, so it could be a disaster. <laughs> so I'm just gonna rub the fat and the flour together. Do you have a favorite cake or recipe that you do in your household? Since I've been back in Wales, I have been taking part in a lot of local Welsh cakes, hence why I've put the weight on. So the plan is I'm gonna make my own and then that's it, time to go on the diet. The problem is they're so delicious. You can't just have one, you need to have one or six. So we just rub this together I'm going to do this video as one continual take because as you can see, the hands do get a bit messy. But this is what they used to do in the old days. They didn't go down the shop to buy cakes. I remember in the eighties, in fact, it was looked down on if you walked out in the street and you ate at the same time. You always waited until you got home before you opened your packet of biscuits. What traditions did, did you remember as a kid that no longer happen now? And also there are phrases that you don't hear these days. Like if you went out for the day and your mother would say, what do I tell people if they phone? So tell them I'll be, back, I'll be back at six. These days now, I think we're a bit too available for people. So just give it a bit more. Try and get all that butter mixed in. I'm using Kerrygold butter today for this recipe. I remember my grandmother, Friday would be her day for baking. And she'd bake all the cakes for the weekend and she would do a trifle. And then that what, that's what the luxury was for a Sunday. We had a Sunday dinner with homemade trifle and then a few homemade little cakes afterwards while we sat down and watched the TV. Now it's been such a long time since I've done this. I can't really remember how fine you're supposed to get it. So let's just have a look. Then we add the sugar and we add the currants. And then we will mix them all in. Now, now we need an egg. I forgot about the egg. So I'll just make a little well. Pop the egg in like so. 
and then see my hands are all already getting a bit let me just fold it in it's a pity you can't smell this it smells gorgeous I'll take a few of these when I go up the mountain tomorrow for a walk And then I just need a little milk. So I'm gonna have to move you for a moment. So if you don't mind, breathing in a bit. And then just add a little dash of milk. And again, we mix that in. I remember sitting at my grandmother's knee as she used to bake her cakes. She did her own bread as well, like a traditional old fashioned grandmother. What's the point in buying it in the shops, she used to say, when I can make it in my own kitchen. There we go. Gave everything a really good mix. There we have it. I've even gone out and bought some cutters. There was a big debate in the shop what size to have. Whether I bought big ones or small ones. All right, let me just get that flower out. I should have kept that out rather than putting it away because I just need a little bit of it to go on the hands. Just to start to bind it together now. Now I don't have a rolling pin, that is one thing that I forgot to get. So what I will do is I will use a milk bottle. I'm sure there are many out, of, out there who have more experience of doing Welsh cakes th than myself. This is the th thing about cooking. It's all about having a go, isn't it? Have, having a bit of fun. You can't live your life online. Sometimes you just need to switch it off and have a bit of fun doing the old fashioned tasks. Right, now let's pop that there. Pop this to one side. And where is my milk bottle? That is the next question. Because I've got a feeling I've got flowers in them. I bought some flowers the other day and I didn't have any. Ah, this is what I can use, a water bottle. So we'll just put Tiny bit of flour over the top of it. Try to make that it doesn't stick. There we go. Soon get this done. Smelling like an old farmhouse kitchen. Gotta get the thickness right now. Now while I'm doing this, I'm going to put the heat on under my bake stone to try and warm that up. There we go. I think that is the right thickness. And I've decided to go for the ring in the middle. I'll just pop that down. And let me just get my tray out. And there we have it. That is the first one cut and ready for the bake stone. I remember one of the elderly ladies of the village used to tell me a story that back in the day when they couldn't afford 
to cook things, they used to take it down to the bakehouse. So they used to make their Welsh cakes in the house and then take them down to the bakehouse so that the baker could pop them into his big oven. And that's what these sort of villages are all about. It's a community effort of all coming together and helping each other out. And I think I can get one more out of there. And then what I'll do is I'll collect all this up. And I'll get some more out of there. But let's just get on and cook this lot first. My stomach is rumbling. So, is the bake stone warm? It's getting there. The problem with an, with an electric cooker, it does take time to warm up. So, I think what I'll do is, I'll have a cup of tea and I'll meet you back here in about five minutes when the bake stone is nice and hot. Now they're very quick to cook, only about three to five minutes on each side. And this baking stone, back in the day, would have been over the open fire on the hearth. And I bought this one from Amazon. But you find, once you have a good bake stone in, in the family, then you keep it and you don't give it away. You just pass it down to the generations. Now I think I might have made these a bit too thick. But it's all about having a go, isn't it? And learning from your mistakes. Right, let's just put all the scrapings onto one side. So I'll clean the cooker later. But I've just got some more to put on. I think I might have done them a bit thick. So if you know what I might have done wrong, I'm sure you'll tell me below. But here are the ones that I have done. There you go, the kitchen gets full of smoke. <laughs> and look at that. Let's give them a taste then. I'm pleasantly surprised to be honest. Mmm. They're a bit, I think they might have been a bit thick. Or maybe the pan is a bit hot. I'm going to enjoy these. Mmm. They're lovely with a nice cup of tea. I think I might keep some of these back for, for when the fire brigade come. Well, I'm impressed. At least they taste like Welsh cakes, even if they don't look like it. Why don't you have a go and 
send me a picture. Send it to me via my website, seanjamescameron.com. Well, I'm going to thoroughly enjoy these now over a nice cup of tea and have a think about what I'm going to get up to over the next few days. Well, thanks for joining me. I'm going to enjoy my Welsh cakes now and I'll catch up with you next time. So from me until then, bye for now and happy eating. Beautiful. Mm -hmm.